we got some 1951 Studebaker Champions and some 1950 models as well. 5051 Studebaker Champions and Commanders today. These things are really unique. So let's take a look at these cars today. In 1852, a company in South Bend, Indiana started manufacturing horse-drawn carriages. 100 years later, they were producing some of the most futuristic cars on the road. The 1950-51 Studebakers, first by far with a post-war car. This was the Studebakers slogan at the time. They are still considered today as one of the most quote-unquote futuristic cars from the past. And this is an entire line of 1950-51 bullet-nose Studebakers the only years that they had the bullet nose design. We have a whole line of 1950 Studebakers champions, a lot of them. The Champion and Commander 50 and 51 Studebakers were some of the most unique cars on the road. So unique, in fact, that it caught the eye of the one and only Fozzie Bear. Turn left if you come to a fork in the road. Yes, sir. Turn left at the fork in the road. Turn left. I don't believe that. Fozzie Bear, Kermit, and the Muppets can be seen cruising around in the 1951 Studebaker Commander in the 1979 Muppet movie. Ah, a bear in his natural habitat. A Studebaker. Hey, Fozzie, look up ahead. What is that? Maybe we should give him a ride. Something often heard about Studebaker during this time period was that they were ahead of their time, experimenting with a new look that resembled the airplanes of World War II. Kind of a cross between a fighter jet in the front and a Vista window from a rail car in the back. But they were perfect for a country ready to hit the roads and explore. The Studebaker champions came in 13 different models. The Studebaker Commanders came in nine different models. There was a champion or a commander for everybody. They were all pretty cost effective too, selling for only around $1,500. Studebaker put over half a million of these cars on the road between 50 and 51. They had a three-speed automatic or manual transmission with the shifters mounted on the column. Some of these cars have so much junk piled in them. It's hard to tell what they even looked like back in the day because there's so much junk in them. That's right. And the 51 Commanders actually had the first modern V8 engine that was available in a low-priced car, putting it about three years ahead of some of their biggest competition. Studebaker Commander, 1951 Studebaker Commander. Oh yeah, you're the commander in this bad boy. <laughs> 1951 Studebaker Commander. I don't think that's where the spare tire went originally. In 1951, this was the car for long distance travel. They had an 18 gallon gas tank and could average 28 miles per gallon.
Though these models were only produced for two years, they definitely left their mark for years to come. And for me, I simply think they're some of the most unique to have ever hit the roads in mass production. And they're surely one of the most futuristic old cars you could find. It's amazing to me that the very word Studebaker is still pretty much a household name even today, even though they stopped producing vehicles in 1967. They definitely left their mark on the automobile industry and American pop culture. I mean, how many other cars out there can say they're Fozzie Bear's natural habitat? Ah, uh, a bear in his natural habitat, a Studebaker. Thanks for watching this episode of Matt's Rat Show. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching this episode. Checking out these old Studebakers with me. I think they're really cool. A really unique car. And uh, yeah, just never seen, just don't see cars like that anywhere.